All right, I just had a doctor's appointment. So while I had a little bit of hyper energy, I wanted to vlog. <laughs> So, a kitten update. Let me go get them and show you how big they are. Here is Mars. Look how big they're getting. He has such an adult face. He is such a sweet boy. He's making me fall in love with him and it's not fair. I want to adopt him and I can't, I can't adopt all of them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's Mars. This is Nemo. They just got out, so they just came in the room. They just, they all want to play, so. Yeah, he's still the runt of the litter. And then this is Bunny. Bunny, such a cutie. Again, she says, I just want to play. Oh my gosh, aggressive. <laughs> okay, fine. Sahara requires the biggest update because she was the one that had the emergency appointment last week. Look at her poor nose. Her poor nose. So her foot is better. Yeah. She's fine now, <laughs> but somehow they think she has this traumatic injury and we don't know how because the kittens weren't even in the great room at that point. They had just been in the bathroom. It's a spare bathroom. It has like a counter and it has a toilet that has shelves above it. So maybe she jumped on the shelf and like fell onto the toilet or something. I don't know how she injured her foot they did an x-ray, there was no fracture, and injured her nose, which the vet said, oh my gosh, it feels like there's a like a scab under the skin. And I was like, what the heck are you talking about? That seems super silly. And then literally a chunk of her skin fell off and you could see this big hole in her nose. And so it was like the scab under her skin came off. And I'm like, how the heck? There's literally a U-Haul truck right now, like a delivery truck that is backing down our driveway. Our driveway is a quarter of a mile long. That had to be a nightmare to back down. One second, let me go deal with this. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know how she got this injury, but yeah, it literally was a scab that fell off her nose and she's just healing now. We gave her gabapentin for like five days or four days or however long it was. And we had her on crate rest, which was so sad. We were not allowed to let her play with her siblings. <laughs> And yeah, after those five days, we let her out. She wasn't limping anymore and her nose scab fell off and is now healing. So poor kid has <laughs> just had a really awful couple of days. Here's baby too. She is being an older sister. She actually has this little cat post here and she will play like queen of the mountain or whatever, king of the hill and just be on top and smack them when they come up, it's so cute. So yeah, that is the update on Sahara. Our outdoor cats are just so cute. They have been bringing us mice and that was crazy watching them eat a mouse. I thought maybe they just kind of eat it whole. They don't, they just kind of nibble on it but they do eat the whole thing except the tail. They literally left the tail and I almost sat on it because I, I will sit outside to pet Wink because just leaving the door open is way too cold. So I'll sit on the floor and they just left the mouse tail right there and I almost sat on it and it was kind of gross. So I made them get rid of that. I think that's all the kitten updates. They're all getting spayed and neutered next Tuesday. So by the next vlog, they will all have been spayed and neutered. And that's been very exciting. <laughs> I did the fun kitten update first. Health wise, I may have a blood clot. <laughs> so it started last Thursday. So on Thanksgiving, I started having labored breathing, which hasn't fully gone away. And I just, even at rest, could not catch my breath. And that was scary because I was like, what is going on? Why is this happening? It was just strange. So I just tried staying calm and just like tried to not do too many strenuous things throughout the day. And then what was also weird is I've just been starting to look at my heart rate. And even right now, just talking to you, it's 108. So even just like getting up, even talking, even laughing would make my heart rate spike. And maybe it's been doing this this whole time and I've just not really been paying out much attention to my heart rate. But it just feels like it's doing crazy things right now, which would also make sense because my endometriosis doctor said she thinks I have POTS and she says that the endo meds that I'm on can also cause like other things like POTS to flare. So that's great. <laughs> so that happened Thursday. Then on Saturday, 
I just felt super lethargic. Like I just felt pretty slow. My dad came and we celebrated Thanksgiving and we were playing some games and I just felt very slow. And then Sunday is when I started having pain in my leg. So it started in my left calf. It was just like this like poking pain. At other times since then, it's been a pinching sensation. It's not like incredibly painful. It's just, I don't normally have pain in my legs like this. It was a poking at one point, then it was a pinching. Then it moved up to my thigh and it was like this warm feeling. The skin itself wasn't that warm to the touch, but the feeling was like a warmth in that area. So I was just having all these different weird leg pains and I have continued to have them even today. My leg is very sensitive, like the back of my calf is super tender and I've just continued having like a poking or a pinching pain and sensation in my calf and then sometimes in the back of my thigh, but mostly my calf. So I was concerned about that because I started Googling it and obviously it was talking about blood clots which would make sense for me because I also had my D-dimer tested recently, which is how likely you are to have a blood clot and it was positive. It can be how likely you are to have a blood clot or you have a blood clot and it was positive. And so I was like, hmm, <laughs> that coupled with my symptoms, yeah. Cause I've also been like excessively sweating and I just have a lot of the symptoms of it. So I ended up having a stress test on Monday at the cardiologist. So I just thought, okay, I'm going to go into the cardiologist's office, tell them what's going on and they'll know what to do. They didn't really give a crap. <laughs> it was like a tech who was giving the stress test and she was just like, call your PCP. And I was like, okay, like, couldn't we just do an ultrasound on my leg and just check? And she was like, call your PCP or go to the ER. And I was like, ERs are so expensive. Like my two ER visits this summer were like $1,000. And that's, you can't just keep doing that. You know what I mean? I'll get back to the stress test because that was a hellish experience. <laughs> I had no idea what I was getting into. So I call my PCP Monday night when I got home from the stress test. Actually, I didn't call, I sent them a message. And I was like, these are my symptoms, like, should I just stay put and see what happens? Should we try to get an ultrasound? Like, what should I do? <laughs> and they called, the nurse called me Tuesday and was like, hi, um, not to be rude, but shouldn't the cardiologist, like why didn't the cardiologist want to just do this at their office? Like, shouldn't they be dealing with this? And I was like, my thoughts exactly. Honestly, not rude at all, I thought the same thing. And so it was just so stupid. She's like, they should be dealing with this. But anyway, so that was yesterday. Finally today, the doctor approved the order, which apparently came through yesterday, but I didn't get it. And they said they sent it through the portal and they didn't. So I had to keep calling. So finally I got it later today and there were no more appointments. So I have to go in tomorrow. And it just says routine. It doesn't even say stat or whatever. So apparently no one's really concerned about this. However, I don't really <laughs> super trust medical professionals because for example, they don't listen to women. Like Serena Williams, when she was having a baby, she was giving birth, she almost died because they didn't listen to her. And she's someone who is famous. So I'm like, people don't listen to women when we say that something is going on sometimes. And so I'm not like freaking out about this. I'm not having a ton of anxiety about this, but I do have weird symptoms I don't normally have. And the D-dimer test makes me think that maybe I might have a blood clot. So I just would like to get it checked out so that we can rule it out and then everything will be fine. So I will do that tomorrow and I will let you know in next week's vlog what happens. But let's go back to the stress test. So I had no idea what I was getting myself into when they said, oh, we're gonna do the stress test. I just thought like you walk on a treadmill and they see how high your heart rate goes. No. <laughs> First of all, they hook you up to this thing and they strap you in with this belt with all the wires that go to this little box because they're doing kind of an EKG while you're getting this done. And I have compression issues. So for example, I haven't worn a bra since I got the vaccine because since then I've had chest pain and chest pressure where it makes it really hard to breathe. So if I put a, a bra on, I cannot breathe. So for her to be winching this belt down on my body, I was like, already can't breathe. <laughs> Secondly, I asked for her to wear a mask because I was wearing a mask and I would really like to take the mask off for my stress test to be able to breathe fully. She was like, I don't know where any are. And so she didn't wear a mask, so I had to wear a mask the whole time. 
Third thing, I have exercise-induced asthma. Do I have an inhaler anymore? No, ran out of it and didn't refill because I'm not exercising. My endo doctor has been like, don't exercise. Keep your heart rate as stable as possible. <laughs> this is the opposite of that. But I was like, I don't really need one right now because I'm not exercising. I'm not doing stupid things. Why would I need one? So I have exercise-induced asthma. So obviously exercising makes it harder to breathe with a mask, <laughs> with a winch compression thing, so I can't fully extend my chest. <laughs> So yeah, so she just keeps, I, I was dying at level one. I was like, how fast are we going and how fast can this thing go? And, and literally at the baseline, my heart rate was 120. I was like, I don't think that's normal. <laughs> she was like, our goal is to get it to 190. And I was like, isn't that like dying level? Like, can't you die from that? <laughs> Uh, also, I'm like really exaggerating this because I think it's funny. So I hope you find it funny too So it's yeah, just putting that disclaimer out there So yeah, I was already having trouble at level one and like every three minutes They increase how fast you go and the the like incline of it And then at the end of those three minutes She'll make you put her your hand on her shoulder so she can take your blood pressure And I am telling you I'm holding on to the treadmill bars for dear life like my arms are the only thing that's keeping me on the treadmill. So every time I had to put my arm on my hand on her like shoulder, I was like, I think I'm about to let go. I like my legs just like, were not going fast enough. There was no pad on the back wall. There was a wall right behind me. And I just kept having this intrusive thought of, oh my God, I'm going to trip. And I'm just going to slam into the back wall or break my face on the treadmill. It was awful. And so by the time I was done, I was almost running. And I was like, look, I, I can't, like if I let go of this, I will fly off the back and I'm really having a hard time here. And she was like, give me 20 more seconds. And I was like, mm, no, I don't want to. So that was incredibly stressful. By the time I was done and like walked out to my dad, my dad was like, you should sit down right now. <laughs> Cause I looked awful. I was full body drenched. I was just profusely sweating drenched in sweat i needed a wheel i literally was hoping that they would have a wheelchair to wheel me out to the car so yeah we sat there for a while rested then we went to the elevators there was a chair there we sat there for a while and rested it was awful i had no idea that that's what it was gonna be and i just felt like that was an awful test for me the kicker the funniest part of this is that they call me today with the results, right? They say, you know, that test was undiagnostic and we're gonna have to do it again. Not only again, we're gonna give you a medication to induce stress on your body so that we can get a test result. And I was like, I was in shock, so I didn't ask like, how the heck was it undiagnostic? So I really think I'm gonna to talk to my cardiologist and be like, look, I don't think that this is right for me right now. I almost died, again, exaggerating, but I felt awful. I felt like I was in hell the first time. I don't think I can do another one. Last night, I slept for 12 hours, a dead sleep, because I've been so tired. So I'm definitely in the fight or flight right now. I think the stress <laughs> test put me in that. And so it's been a, it's been a tough couple of days. So I also really thought, okay, if I have a blood clot, this is probably gonna get it going, probably gonna get it moving. Maybe if I have an emergency, this would be the best place to have it because there's cardiologists around here somewhere. So yeah, <laughs> it was just an awful experience. But fingers crossed that we get more information tomorrow. And if they see a blood clot, hopefully they'll tell me immediately so I can figure out what the heck to do next. So I'm gonna go rest because I'm, really out of breath and really tired and need to rest. <laughs> but these kittens have been a full-time job watching them. They already pulled off, yeah, there's already a basket on the floor. They already pulled off a coral piece that is on like this wall of, this is like our wall of nice things. And they already pulled off a coral piece. And I really thought the whole thing would shatter. It was this beautiful coral that I think my parents got like on their honeymoon or something. I really thought the whole thing would shatter because it fell like three feet to the floor, but only the corner kind of fell off. So that was good. But yeah, they're destructive little children. So. I'm gonna go rest. I hope you have a fabulous day and I hope you never have to experience a stress test in your life because that was awful. <laughs> All right, bye.